Washington being in gridlock and Washington being unable to move. That's only been the last two years. And I think I need to make that point. This term of Congress that we're just finishing has been considered by historians and people who really understand and study the Congress to be the worst performing Congress in the history of the Republic. When Harry Truman said he ran against a do-nothing Congress, he didn't know a thing. <laughs> but it wasn't like that before. From 2007 to 2011, Nancy Pelosi was the Speaker of the House of Representatives, and it was considered the most productive Congress ever in the history of the world. We worked like our hair was on fire. Now, I'm smart enough to know that just passing bills is not the way you judge a Congress. It's what's in those bills that matters. Is it going to move your life forward? Where are you going to go in the future? Are we looking to rebuild an economy that we know is rebuilding? Are we going to get out of wars that are draining our treasury, with not only of our precious youth, but of the money that we need to rebuild this economy? Those are decisions that needed to be made in Washington these last two years. But what did we do? 34 votes to repeal a health care bill that every president since Teddy Roosevelt has tried to pass. And we weren't passing that bill. I went through the Clinton health care plan. We weren't doing that because we wanted people to throw stones through our district office windows or threaten our grandchildren. We did it because health care was 20% of GDP, and we couldn't afford it to go any higher. We had to make the change. It is a good bill. It's not a perfect bill. But 34 times, they said, we're going to kill it. Going to kill it, replace it with nothing. Now. The whole notion, too, that why Kathy and I need to go back, and I speak to all of you because you're all involved, is what is happening in the war on women. Some of us have been in that war for 40 years, and we thought these things were settled. We had no idea that we'd have to go back and fight for contraception. But Kathy and I need to be there because we're not going to let them take that away from us. Kathy and I understand that Medicare and Social Security are promises and commitment. We've made Democrat bills, Franklin Roosevelt, Lyndon Johnson. And there have been people in the Congress all that time who didn't vote for them in the first place and who don't believe in them today. I want seniors to know, and I just heard it on the radio coming in, that they're, they're, what they're saying is we don't know if it'll work. But we believe if we just give them some money and let them go into the private insurance uh, market and fend for themselves, then it may work out okay. Well, let me tell you something, it won't. It won't work out okay. 
And the second part is the Medicaid, which we've not paid that much attention to, but Andrew brought that up. Then what they're going to do is cut a third off the top and then send it to the state, see if Andrew can do anything better. And two thirds of that Medicaid money goes to people in nursing homes. What do you think is going to happen to them? We, a great commentator said, this election is not about Obama, it's about your mama. <laughs> and it's important that we realize that. Now we're on the way. We are on the way. But consumer confidence is coming back, jobs are being created. We saw that awful hemorrhaging of jobs, we're creating jobs now. Unemployment rate is, is falling, we have brand new technologies. And what would happen here in Rochester is nothing short of phenomenal to me. And I say all the time that the next Chester Carlson's and George Eastman's are at work is today in Rochester. Been planning for tomorrow, planning for the future. And because of what Andrew Cuomo and Bob Duffy are doing, there is a future. Uh, I, I need to say, as someone who worked in both state and federal government, the fact that they are so intent that upstate thrive, as well as the rest of the state of New York, is a pretty wonderful thing for us. She is a phenomenon, as you know, and gorgeous on top of it. But I, you know, I'm not jealous or anything. But she really came into Washington, practically carried on the shoulders of senior citizens in this country because of the way she had stood up to Medicare. She's an absolutely remarkable woman. And she's got a tough district, a very tough district, but I think she's winning it big, frankly. And I'm not so sure. And everybody knows her from the experiences she had already had in government, but for the wonderful things that she espouses. And bipartisanship is a good thing. And Kathy believes in that, Andrew believes in that, I believe in that. We talk about Stock Act, the most bipartisan bill ever passed the House of Representatives. But in any case, neither of us can win unless the votes come out. The city of Rochester is the key for both of us in so many ways. And we're working very hard, and I certainly appreciate the plumbers, of course, and all my other brothers and sisters in labor, and I see all the leaders here, and God bless you. But we've got to get on the street in force. We have got to spend the next 11 days here making sure that everybody gets out to vote. Uh, we, if you have some time on election day, we'd like a couple of hours of it to come down and help us get the vote out. Bob Slaughter and I are volunteering to wash dishes, clean the house, take care of the children. Whatever it takes while somebody drives those people to the polls. And from six to nine. Bobby didn't know that. Okay, from six to nine, we're going to be concentrating on the people and what we believe need to vote and have not yet, we want to remind them. It's going to take a lot of hands in the kitchen to get that done. But I love you so much for everything you've done. I tell you, it's been phenomenal. The thousands and thousands of phone calls made, the thousands and thousands of doors knocked on. I've never seen such wonderful dedication. I'm so proud of my campaign staff and the wonderful work they're doing. And Kathy wants to know some very proud of her. Now that we can be uh, wrapped in this endorsement, which is so important to us. I think it lets everybody else know that we are also a partnership, not just in Washington, but with the state of New York. We want to be a part of that moving this state forward to be the Empire State once again. Uh, thank you very much. I appreciate everything that you're doing and everything you will do between now and November 6th. I love you.